I don't know what's going on. Okay, so um, oh, do you know what? This might have been an old one that I printed off of mine, and maybe I've changed it since. Okay, well, this page, whatever this page is. So um, yeah, it's probably fine. I probably just wrote up on an old version. If, if, if at any point you've got the wrong pages, I've got a spare pack here as well. I'll just leave it here. In case you need to grab it. Yeah. Um, so whatever this page is, so just reminding us um, from last lesson, we demonstrated visually. Um, this is the thing. Where do you, whereabouts are you given this thing? If you're in an exam, where would you go to find this? In the formula, formula book. Yeah. So if you had a brain fart formula. in the exam, you could always go to the formula booklet, and it tells you area is the what's this thing? Integral. The integral. Yep. The twig. We call it the twig. The integral. According to Leibniz from the rap battle, what was what is what did he actually mean this to be? What do you mean in English? Song. Oh, this is from the rap battle. Owen and I had a rap battle. Yeah, but you yeah. I don't understand the way you ask the question. That's what. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Probably, I don't even know how I did it because I don't remember already. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. It's, a, it's an elongated S, the integral sign. Leibniz, the German one, which is this one. That's Newton. He came up with this symbol. It's an actual elongated S, meaning the sum. Why does it mean the sum? Because in theory, <coughs> the integral, you're at, it's as if you've got an infinite amount of rectangles, an infinite number of rectangles under the curve that you're adding up like this. So here we had four rectangles, but in theory integration is when you've got an infinite number of small, small, small skinny rectangles and you're adding up all those areas. If you, as it approach, as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, the area gets closer and closer to the integral. So remember it's the limit as the number of rectangles approaches infinity is the sum of the um, height of each rectangle multiplied by the width of each rectangle. Bella, just pretend to look interested. Okay, so <laughs> the height of each rectangle times the width of each rectangle. Um, in the formula booklet, they turn this thing, this whole thing here in circle, actually, in Leibniz's version, means this, the sum. And what is A again? It's the bottom one. Yeah, it's the lower, lower limit. Lower limit. The lower limit of integration. And B is the upper. upper limit of integration. Good, yep. The one to the left is A. The one to the right is B. Um, of the height of each rectangle times by the width of each rectangle, and they give it to you like this. What does f of x? What does the y represent? The function. The function. Yeah, that's it. Good. And so demonstrating it visually is what we did. So it's the area. It's as if you've got. Katie's gone. Okay. So it's as if you've got. <laughs> <laughs> she saw me today at recess. Yeah, and she laughed. Oh, okay. She's going to celebrate this kidding. Oh, she told me that. Oh, and then I forgot already. That's right, yeah, she even told me that. Okay, so um, so you see the lower limit? So by the lower limit, what do we mean? Because some of you might understand the word lower limit, but what does it mean on a graph? It means the, the limit, the bottom part of the area, where the limit stops, where the area stops and where the area, where the area begins, sorry, and where it ends on the x-axis. So, oh, it, the lower limit <laughs> is where the area begins and the upper limit is where the area ends on the uh, graph. <laughs> why do you say my name? <laughs> what? Uh, I wasn't going to talk, it's too old. <laughs> oh, she's losing my line of vision all the time. It's where you sit as well, you're in my line of vision. Whereas over here, they're safe. Yeah, over here, they're safe. Well, yeah, over here, they're safe because it's my lazy eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's where the lower limit is. 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 Okay, so so that's why Lauren's now sitting over here. That's what it means, man. All right. So what we've got is this thing. So here's the funny, funny curve. It could be a straight line. That's just the thing. The, the integral is a, is a way of calculating the area underneath. It's not exactly the area underneath. It's just really, really, really close to it. So they call it an approximation. So if ever you see it in a question, what is an approximation for the area under the graph? What's the point of this? <laughs> What's the point of this? Yeah. You mean real world and stuff? Yeah. Let's see. Hey, you're I know, I know for sure. 
Awesome. I know for sure you use it in physics a lot. So in my first year of university, yeah, well, yeah. we had to yeah. use calculus, oh, like yeah. integral and um, yeah. like, you know, velocity acceleration. And <laughs> like, say, imagine you knew the, um, imagine you knew the uh, acceleration mm -hmm. formula, you could integrate it to get the velocity formula. The, the area. Yeah, the 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 <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, integration in the real world. So. Yeah, I'm going to take care. Architects here. My brother No, so you don't need the next unit. I can teach my brother. Imagine it's a Architecture? Oh, engineers, engineers, because of the physics to start with. Calculate integration is used to determine the exact length of a. Thank you. Integration is used to electrical engineering. The exact length of a power cable needed to connect two substations in, by an engineer, which are miles away from each other. Architecture. Engineers, as many engineers, use integration in determining the amount of necessary materials to construct curve shaped constructions. I imagine, I imagine in finance you might too, because if you're going to study to be an actuary or something, you need to do a lot of um, calculus, um, more advanced calculus, because um, you have to come up with models. For predicting future things and sometimes sometimes it's the area under the graph actually yeah my wife was saying something about when you know when they do catastrophe insurance that they kind of combine two models and they take the integral of the combination or something like that and that's a way of calculating how much money they need to put aside oh, okay. so you did say there is integral calculus used in some basic catastrophe insurance um, applications in stats let's see in graphics Chemistry. I'm just trying to see is there one in finance. Epidemiology, the study of the spread of infectious disease relies heavily on calculus. It can be used to determine how far and faster disease is spreading, where it may have originated from and how best to treat it. Okay, but the lawyer, Richard, the lawyer does not need to know calculus. That's that's the Maybe not as much for the lawyer. Maybe not as much for the lawyer. So there's an interesting one here as well. Statisticians use calculus to evaluate survey data to help business plans for different develop business plans for different companies. Because a survey involves many different questions with a range of possible answers like variables. Calculus allows a more accurate prediction for the appropriate action. But how do biologists use it? To determine the exact rate of growth in a bacterial culture when different variables such as temperature and food. May, uh, engineers use it a lot though. I would say, yeah, finance as well. If you're going to do something mathematical in the finance field, like you'd probably need to do a bit of calculus in your degree. Yeah. Yeah, you might end up using the computer, but to get the qualification, they want you to have the math background behind it. So that kind of thing. Um, okay, yeah, so that, I hope you're satisfied with that answer because I'm now moving on. <laughs> you have no, oh, do you have no friends? Remember this was so. This was you have no friends. Was why was this? Why were there? Why does this person have no friends? Because you can't do A and A. Yeah, because the area under the curve between A and A is zero. Because there's no space at yeah. all. Yeah. So the same point. Um, okay, so we're up to here. We did this one. We did in green. We did it with calculator, and then this one we did by hand. So I'll just remind you of how we did it. It says write down a definite integral which gives the area of the shaded region. Da, 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 da. And then evaluate it using your GDC. So that's why we needed our calculators out. So if you don't have your calculators out, you might want to grab them out. Do you know what? Like, oh. No, it has your name on it and your form, and I was like. Do you know what I think must have happened? Because you know I stuck it in the charging dock? Because something was wrong with your battery, wasn't it? So I had to pop it in the charging dock. 
And quite often, teachers will come and grab them and use them. And I'd say a teacher who grabbed it, uh, grabbed yours instead of one of the school ones, because they look the same, except yours can have your name written on it. Right. And the school one just has BHS carved on it. And they took yours and they probably left it there. Yeah, so I, I have it back. Well, that's naughty. Oh, I'm glad they gave it back to you because um, otherwise the yeah, would have gone missing. Oh, so you've got one of the school ones still. Yeah. Does it need to be charged? Oh, so I think I've got a feeling that, yeah, sorry guys, let's um keep going with this because, yeah, as Kia just said, we need to get through this so you can do your TA. Um, so at some point, if you, I think your one, the battery is a bit bad, but you can borrow the other one. But if you ever need it charged and you don't have a charger, then you can give it to me and I'll put it in the dock. But if you've got a charging cord, then the school one should charge. Yours one's un your one, unfortunately, is not charging. If it's dead already, it's probably... I found that I charged it and then bang, it died within like two days. And then I thought I'd just keep get, keep charging it and see what happens. But it's not coming back to life. Um, sometimes the, the first copies of these new ones, the, cat the batteries have been bad. Okay, so just a quick reminder, like how we found this. Had, what did I press to find the integral? Math. Math, yep. Nine. Nine, function integrate, yep. And then we put in the lower bound limit, the upper limit, the function, and it's dx. Nice, okay, cool. Um, so, and then to do it by hand, remember your one was missing the function, I forgot to write it on yours. This was meant to go with the question. So you're meant to be told this, you weren't meant to just work out the function yourself. So, um, to do it by hand, some of you were curious on how would you do this by hand. So, to, what you have to do is, you integrate this function, because this is 4x to the minus 2. So to integrate it, you've got to add 1 and then divide by the answer to the new exponent. So add 1 to negative 2, you get negative 1. Then remember, you have to always divide by the new power. And 4x to the negative 1 divide by negative 1 is negative 4x to the negative 1, which you can rewrite as this is negative 4 over x. Yes, Lauren? Do you remember you can do this with a calculator? Okay, um, yep, so that's fine. And then it's the integral that goes into here. And so here, here I've just rewritten this with the integral, but this is the thing we do in calculus, in integral calculus. You, you pop the integral in here, and then you just put little square brackets around it, and see the upper and lower bounds, the upper and lower limit, you pop here, and then you just, you sub the upper limit in first, calculate that, and you always subtract, that's why I've got that in green, because you always subtract the thing, the integral, with the lower limit, the lower limit subbed in, and you subtract the one with the upper limit minus the one with the lower limit, and then that's how you get the two. In the calculator, you just throw this in. So the calculator, you go math, blah, blah. Um, okay, so we were up to doing this one. Da, 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 da. So this one is a bit yucky. You wouldn't, in our course, we wouldn't be asked to integrate this one. Because it's, we only are only expect, expected to integrate composite functions where the baby, the subbed in function, is linear. But this is not linear, this one's quadratic. So doing this one by hand is a bit beyond our course. So this one would just be done with calculator. So pop it in with calculator, like the green thing. So uh, what is my, do the, the symbol, the tweet that we've nicknamed it, or the elongated S? What's the lower limit in this area? Zero. Zero. So, yeah. zero. Zero. so zero. What's the upper limit? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So I think lower limit is lower on the S. Upper limit is up higher on the S. It's sometimes this is getting the wrong way around. Right. And then they get weird like areas and stuff. And then what's our function? Mm -hmm. Up that y yeah. is that. Yeah. So it's four minus x squared. <laughs> and then what do yeah. we always get yeah, the x because we think that's x. Let's get our notation all nice. And then we just throw this in the calculator. Just practice throwing it in the calculator because you want this to go into your muscle memory. So you want to just, in an exam. Oh, I know where's my thing gone. There we go. So math, so I'm just going to do this one. Zero, lower limit, upper limit is two. Plug in our gorgeous function. 4 minus x squared. And then dx, you just go across and type in x. It's annoying that you have to do that all the time sometimes. What do you get? 3.14159. What's special about that number? Is it pi? It's pi! Right, I said that last time. It's not pi. So it's pi is 3.14159. It's 8585. Is it? Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. Close and, eye. and that's a good that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because the integral just gives you approximately the area underneath. So it could be plus. Yeah, so in theory it probably should like when you look at this, this is a quarter circle. It makes sense. Radius yeah. two. So when you work it out like pi r squared over four, it equals pi two squared over four, which would you agree is part? Yeah. So uh, really the real area should be gang, pi. Gang. So the integral just gives us something really, really, really close to it. Because remember, it's just a theory. As if you drew an infinite amount of rectangles underneath and separately calculated their area, Wait, what just happened? Yeah, can you explain the red thing just really briefly again? Explain the what thing? The red thing? Uh, uh, top, top, top. Oh yes. Yeah. See how this is a quarter circle? Yeah. It's a quarter circle. So it's quarter circle. Yeah. And an yeah. and area of a circle. It's pi r squared. Yeah, it's pi r squared. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So see geometrically, I kind of did it geometrically up here. So if you want to make a note, you could write geometrically. Geometrically. So why should I divide it by 4? Because it's a quarter of a circle. Quarter. Oh, yeah, the whole circle is the big like this. So it's a quarter of a circle and it's got a radius of 2. Um, so we know that its area should be exactly pi. So this is a good proof of how the calculator doesn't always give you the exact area, it just gives you something really close to it. That's what the integral does. So if ever you're asked in an exam or a textbook question, find an approximation for the area underneath. They just mean the integral is not 100% accurate, it's an approximation. So don't be put off if they ask for an approximation of the area. They just want you to integrate it in some way. <coughs> and then so what did we get again? What was it on the calculator? 3.14159. So, um, and then let's make a note of that, which is close to the close to the exact area, the real area, which is pi, but slightly off. So technically, it's always slightly off. Yeah, but like notice it was wasn't until you got kind of beyond where was. Where did it go off? Was it at the three? At the three, yeah. It wasn't until you got to here that it was off. So it's really, really close. Okay. But like, you know, as you can see, it's just slightly off. <coughs> but slightly off. Um, this is because the integral is just an approximation, yeah? Because the integral is just an approximation of the area. Just an approximation of the area under the curve, like that way. The curve, the area under the curve, I've wrote this way. Yes, I know. So the keyword was approximated. Yes, Krista. Wait, so you said that we will have to mark it all by hand, but we'll start to do it. we could. You could, you could. So in a way, if someone just said find the area under the graph, if I just said find the area under the graph curve, you could have done it like this. Because quite often, you'll see sometimes there's some questions where you can do it geometrically. Like, I'll, I'll just zoom ahead quickly and show you an example of one. See how this one here, the areas, the shaded areas, it's a combination of, you could think of it as a combination. A rectangle. Yep, a rectangle, a triangle, and a triangle. Or you could think of it as a triangle and a, what, what's another name for this shape? A trapezoid. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, actually, technically, this could be called a trapezoid. Yeah, trap yeah, the same thing. Trapezoid is American and trapezium is British. Oh, that's not half. That's like three, three quarters. Actually, te technically, like this could be a whole one. This could be the whole trapezoid. Yeah, so technically, this could be a whole trapezoid. Because these, these two sides don't have to be... It's not an isosceles one. An isosceles one would be going out like that. Isosceles meaning these two are the same. Yeah, sure thing. To be a trapezoid, it just has to be four-sided shape with just one pair of parallel sides. Really? Yeah. Oh, repeat the important one. A trapezoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be a trapezoid, it just has to be a quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides. Oh, Whereas yeah. a rectangle has two pairs. Yeah, so this formally is actually a whole trapezoid. But if you are going to do it, like if you kind of did it more like this, then that's called an isosceles trapezoid, if you've got the same. 
That's a, a special kind of trapezoid. So you can get trapezoids that are like that. <laughs> so this one you're going to work out with geometry. No, it has to be four sides. Yeah, it has to be four sides. Yeah, to be four sides. yeah that's true. Yeah, it has to be four sides. What would that be? I don't know. Was that a pentagon? Yeah. An irregular, probably an irregular <laughs> pentagon. <laughs> irregular pentagon. <laughs> work out well by hand. We've done this one by hand. Here, see, hi. We will have to leave. Three point. So what is it, Kyoto? Three point one four one five nine. Six five three five eight nine seven nine three. Nine, three. We have a right. dispute. That is three two three eight four six two six four nine nine. You know all that? Could be. That's a, we were just a boy. He didn't pay us no much attention. I was just a wrong. Yeah, I was just a wrong. Well, you are impressive. I I can't remember beyond one four one five nine. There's a song that's three point one four one five nine. That's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should keep going. That's an awesome song. Have you heard the song six three seven five? That's a song. Yeah. It's a Canadian song. Yeah, it's a classic old song. And so a math teacher turned it into three point one four one five nine. He's meant to be reading out a girl's number. So he's meant to be reading out a girl's number, but he turned it into instead five. Oh, yeah. You have to integrate that, and then then up, sub it in. The, the, the upper axis. one in, yeah. But this is one integrating. So yeah. not the denominator. Yeah, okay. into the integral. But integrating one like this is beyond the SL course because it's a composite function. But in our function, we just required if it's a composite function with a linear subject. But this is a composite with a quadratic subject. So integrating that's beyond our course. So that would be a either non-calc or they expect you to do it geomet geometrically, which can be, a, they can ask you to do work out the area and you're supposed to use geometry. That can happen. Like that one and the one I just showed you with the trapezoid and the triangle. Um, yeah, the next one's nice. It's just an X squared. So if you were to do it with calculator, we'll just show that we, what we would do. So to do it with calculator, I'll work up here. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then put that in square bracket. Yeah, no. And then write the two boundaries. Yes. <laughs> yeah. See, this, this is this is because this is like I've got to show you. Oh, you want me to say? Okay, so yeah. we integrate it. We put the original function, and then you put the the um integration. Like that. That thing. Okay. That's what I mean. <laughs> See that? Yeah. Yeah. You might want to. You might want to, Chris, to see how. Ph yeah. has already done this stuff up here, so maybe you don't don't have that stuff. So I'd erase it and start straight with the brackets. So you've got a bit of space now. Yeah. Okay, pals. Next time we're just not going to volunteer. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do it on the whiteboard, and I'll write it up here. You talk us through, and I'll write what you're writing. So basically, so you put it in the brackets, and the integrated form of x squared is, and you put that in the bracket, and then the lower quartile, the lower limit is one, and the upper limit is three. So you subtract the. So then you could do, you substitute, you substitute the limit in three axes. So then it'll be three cubed over three, subtract, now you subtract the low, you put in the lower limit into x as well. So one over three. So then that gives you 27 over three, subtract one over three, which equals 26. Over three, which equals eight point six seven. Um, so, oh, is this x cubed? Yeah. So this is the integration of x cubed. So it's x squared. Integration. That's why I was guessing. Yes. Yeah. But she said not to write it. I didn't really write it down. Yeah. Because. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know. can definitely write it. But just we didn't have space. We didn't have space for you to write it. No, because I just felt so confused. I was like, why is it? Because I just need to integrate, so that's why I knew. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Twister, it's fine to write it. The only reason was it was just we were going to run out of space. So, that's the only reason. You can write it like that still. That's it. But so basically, Chris, that's how you had the red thing. Can you show me what you wrote? Yeah, she wrote that. 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 The Sarah show. Half okay. So Sarah, you might want to write the integral. I'll just scroll up a bit for you. So you might want to write the the integral a bit. Oh yeah. Do you have space? Do you have space on your page? Wait, so literally, it says Chuck. You were telling me I had no space for my question, and it's right there. Ah, see, see, is this one? Yeah, I know. All right, there, fair enough. So the good thing is, on on the board, we can always extend the page anyway. Basically, you were telling me that. Oh, was the yeah, I meant to put C. But then we're doing them all by hand anyway. So in the theory, I was going to just do one by hand, which was going to be C, but we're doing all of them by hand. Okay, so let's listen to Sarah while she talks us through this. So Sarah's worked it out. For the sake of the people away, Sarah's worked it out without calculator. I mean, with calculator. How would we do this one without calculator? You could do this one without calculator. Do you want to, who wants to go? I'll let you fight. I'll let you fight. Come on, Lauren. Fight her. And now you, there's a bit more spacey. You've got more space, so you, you can do it on the board if you want, or you can do it on it. If not, I'm gonna do it. I'll do it. Okay, okay let's go. Let's go because we've got a few more pages to go. Okay, I'm going on the board to do it. Okay, yeah, you talk, and then I'll write what you're. So any exam you guys can think of me. Yay! Whoa, the just joking. Come on, pal, talk. So. The sign oh, yeah. 
Are you paying attention, Lauren? Oh, I'm looking at this. <laughs> so that's square, not. So basically, the integration of this would be. Oh, by the way, sorry to interrupt. No. When it's got two things separated by a plus or a minus, we have to put a bracket on it. Uh, or, or else they assume it's just a 3 dx. But here it's the whole thing dx. Yeah. But when it's a single little thing like this, you don't need the bracket. You don't need, yeah, don't need it. Yeah. When there's things separated, sorry, do you keep going for a second? Wait, we're integrating. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, we're integrating. No, it's not. It's the other way. It's the other way. Uh, wait, so Miss Maloney, then we add, pl is it plus? It's Miss Maloney, Chris. It's Miss Maloney? Yeah. Oh, it's Miss Maloney. Now you're doing this. I did not. <laughs> so, Chris, are you doing this thing now? Yeah. Yeah. Contemplating my. So, put it in isn't, isn't this the integration of this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, then, and. Then put it in the square. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. But it's just a notation. Awesome. And what do you mean? <laughs> Negative <laughs> one and two. Okay. Cows. I've watched it. <laughs> yeah, guys, because um, some people want to hear what Chris is saying. So, so I think I'm starting in the. Oh, I should start in this part. So I'm gonna start in the upper upper limit. Yep, I'm starting the upper limit first. Good. Subtract the lower limit. Okay. So then that will give you. Then four to two, two is eight. So two times eight, so that will give you sixteen over three plus nine. Why don't you put it all the time in the See? Well, I like to take it steps. Oh, and see, um, see how there's a bit of a. You're probably doing it right, but without these brackets here, if you don't have those yeah. black brackets that yeah. I drew, yeah. there'd be a bad math problem. Because it's meant to be the whole of the upper limit subbed in minus See. the whole of the bottom. Lost the end so far. So the double, yeah. But you were doing that in your head like this. Okay, so then this will just give you 2 times negative 1, so negative, negative 2 over 3. Subtract 3 over 1. Would it be negative 2 over 3? Do you get yep. negative 2 over 3? Then multiply it all by 3, so I get 16 plus 27, so that will be 43 over 3. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, you don't have to do that. I don't have to come... What's going on there? 3 times 2 is? Ooh, I got 9. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You do your thing in 3 squared. Yeah. Okay, so what do I do next? Don't I have to... You could make them, yeah, common denominator. Six is the same as what number over three? Eighteen over three? Yeah. Eighteen over three is six, yeah. I like it. Minus? Well, you're just doing it, Miss Maloney. No. <laughs> yes, you are! <laughs> no, no, sorry. I'll stop. And then that just becomes um, nine over three. Yeah, nine over three. Oh, I guess I'm just doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna so this, yeah. this is just pointless. Did you get us to like the last step? Sixteen. Yeah. Well, let's see. You have <laughs> what's sixteen plus eighteen? Thirty-four. Thirty-four over three minus what's negative um, two thirds minus nine thirds? Mm -hmm. um, negative eleven. Which is plus eleven thirds. Yeah. Did you put that? Uh, it was 34 over 5 3, which equals 15. Yay, good. That was so much work. Yeah, it was a lot of work, wasn't it? But it's good that you're practicing these other ones because you can be asked if you're on a non shelf. Oh, Wait, Miss Lenny, now I have to talk to you. Yeah, Wait, go up, Miss Lenny, please. Okay. I'll, um, I'll uh, zoom out a bit so you can see more of the page. That's great. Oh, that's good. Yep, so here was where C. Sarah did it with the calculator up here. And that was her answer. So we just, we got the same answer. So it's good that you guys are keen to try it with, um, what did I say? Without calculator, that's good. Because I wasn't expecting you to want to do that. So well done. Te challenging yourself. Huh? You do, that's right. Yeah, need a good knowledge of fractions and bed math and all that kind of stuff.
So it's good that you're practicing them. If you're waiting, feel free to try the next ones. Maybe use something erasable. So then in case any of you want to do it on the board too. A pencil. <laughs> yeah, something erasable. A pencil or an erasable pen. Use something erasable just in case also you run out of space or something like that. We're not getting onto our IA. No, we can I mean, TA. TA, yeah. I could, if you want, we can do these ones with calculator. Do you want to do the next paper no, with calculator? No, 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 no
Yeah. And you want us to put it in a fraction, you say? Yeah, oh yeah, 1.3 recurring is fine too. Okay. Yeah, 1 and a third, 1.3 recurring. So if they just ask you to calculate this green thing, sometimes they just say, find the answer to the green thing, in which case the negative is what they want. But if they're saying what is the area, like say in the, like that's been shaded, the area has to be a positive. Are we going to put units squared or something? Yeah, you can write units squared if you want, that's fine. I'm just going to write a little note as area should be positive. Is a positive value or something like basically just explain to yourself in a way that makes sense to you why we need to if it's asking for the area calculate it in the calculator and just make write your answer as a positive if they just want the integral if they just said do this green thing they didn't mention anything about the area just to leave it as a negative so that's an extra thing to consider so that's why it's okay to do this page with calculator because this is more this is more what we're trying to get from this page rather than practicing doing it by hand the same thing with this, it's underneath the graph, set up your little tweak. What's the lower bound? The lower limit, sorry? Next to the upper limit. Zero. Zero, yeah. So we're just talking about the shaded it. area. They just said the shaded bit, not this bit here, yeah, that's kind of thinking. Put it in brackets because there's two terms being added or subtracted. Is that a cube or a cube? Three. Uh, three. I don't know. Yeah, three. I think it is a cube, yeah, you're right. Is it right. a cube or a three? I'm pretty sure that's the same to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, C and D relates to the top one. You don't have pictures on yours? Okay, cool. So again, this one's underneath the curve. You just set up the... Uh, so you set up that thing, the elongated S. What's our lower bound? Uh, upper limit, sorry. 15. Now we're at our funny wacky function. Just two things subtracted, a half square root of S. Minus two, a bit awkward to put in a calculator, but you can. That's the easiest. And what's it equal to? Negative 10 point 660. Yeah. 637. Negative 10. Um, six, six sixes. Okay. So, oh, what's it's negative, negative 10 point 10 6 recurring? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, know. I think it's meant to be 10.6. So it's pretty close, because remember the calculator is slightly off mm -hmm. sometimes? So it is actually meant to be 10.6 recurring, but it's roughly anyway, negative 10.6 recurring. Um, so what is our area then? 10.7. Yeah, yeah, that's area. 10.6 or 10 and 2 thirds. If I put 10.7, um, is that the case that's what my calculator shows me? Uh, 10.7. If it was, yeah, because rounded to 3 six weeks, it is 10.7, isn't it? 10.7. Yeah, so you're right. If you round it to 3 six weeks, it would be 10.7. Oh. So this is all just to point this out. Um, if you do draw a little tweak, what's our lower limit? Negative 2, Negative two and, and 1. Okay. And we need a bracket. It'll be below the curve. Mm -hmm. 53.4. Uh, so, area is. Yeah, 53. Great. So Units. Okay. What did you call to me for? That does mean square root of x, not square root of x minus 2. No, yeah, the oh, minus okay. 2. Minus 2 is outside the square root. Like it ends there. Yeah, it's meant to end there, yeah. That's a good point. It's not like, you know, sometimes it's a dodgy print and then like it's missing the square root all over the whole thing. It's meant to be just over the X. Yeah. Um, so, in summary, for that bit, if they're asking for the shaded area and this area is beneath the X axis, you need to turn the negative answer from the calculator into a positive X. Look at that. Anyway, let's see. Hell yeah.
if they're asking, if all they're asking for is the value of the definite integral, so if they instead said find the value of the definite integral, we leave the negative answer as a negative. Negative. Well, yes. It's why it's only it's only just because in our universe we don't have negative areas. What's wrong with the next? Yes, this is the hard part. Next one. Next one. Moving us along. Well done. Okay, it's okay if I go. Cool. Let's go. Oh gosh, I'm asking you to go here. You thought you were going to complete all of this and have time to do it. Okay, where are we? Uh, we're on page 20, aren't we? You this one. Five minutes after this, you missed it. No, no, we'll just go. Okay, keep any negatives, negative. I wrote. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> what I wrote that. Did it ask us to calculate the shaded area? No, no, no. Evaluate. Evaluate. So, so keep any negatives, negative. So this bit is going to be a negative answer. Keep it negative. And you're going to add it to this other bit, which is in the positive. I don't know what those are. So keep any negatives, negative. Because it's just asking us to evaluate the definite integral. Oh, I gave you space so you could do it by hand. How nice of you. So, uh, oh, you can see, look at what I wrote, the no go to So let's practice doing this one. Right, so, integrated. Yeah, we set up, put the little integral in here. If you want, you can integrate it on the side. What is the integral of x squared? Three, three cubed over three. Yeah. And that's not going to simplify. Sometimes I do it roughly over here in case something simplifies. What's the integral of 4x? 4 x squared over 2. Yeah, 4 x squared over 2. And that simplifies. So that's why I kind of did it roughly on the side. So, Well, you could do it roughly in here too. x cubed over 3 doesn't simplify. But 4 x squared over 2, what does that become? 2x squared. So in my like, nice neat writing out, I'm just going to put the nice one. <laughs> so, because we've got to show, we're, just, we're going to do some stuff in here. So you want to do this one by hand? Yeah. And negative 2 up to 2. Yeah. Yeah. Negative 2 by 2. And if you happen to get any negative answers, keep them negative. <laughs> yeah. Handle. Okay. Um, so now we sub in the upper limit first. Stop in the upper limit bit. Yeah, as I learned through my system, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay, two, oh yes, that's right. Two cubes over three. Well, put out your big black bracket. Big black. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, you get a bad back mm -hmm. And you always subtract. <laughs> and uh, then you've got to put in a negative. So make sure you put. Make sure you put your negative in a bracket because the cube of a negative is a negative. Oh, well, the square, yeah, and the square of a negative is different to the square negative. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> square of a negative. A square of a negative is different from the cube of a negative. Just, yeah. keep, just, so just keep put everything in brackets. Yeah, just put everything in brackets. That's the best idea. See if it's a positive, it's not such a biggie. But if it's a negative, we can get a boo boo about it. Um, Just simplify the fiction of the Why is 8 plus 24? Why is it 28? Why is it 28? Because 8 is not a 3. I just changed my answer. No, I don't change. It is. It's in black. I got that, Miss Maloney. Wait, Miss Maloney, I thought when you... I just want to confuse you is that you just simplify the fiction of 8. And then when you put it down to 3. You have 4 x squared over 2. Oh, it's 4 x squared over 2. And so you can't have got like that? You could, but that's more work. And notice 4x squared over 2 simplifies to 2x squared. That's just less work, that's all. You can oh, still sub it into 4x squared over 2, yeah. 
Yeah, it's just more work, that's all. Never mind. Yeah, so sometimes I integrate it roughly on the side in case anything cancels down. And then you know, I put in the cancel down. Okay. Can you play this? Two, I just happen to do that. Two square, but then I didn't get plus yeah. eight. I got plus yeah. eight. Why'd you get a plus? Uh, this one? What's the oh, bed mass. Negative, you've got to do exponents first. What's negative two times negative two? Four. Four. Four, and then four times two. Shouldn't it be? Yeah, bed mass is exponents before multiply. So you've got to times square the two, square the negative two, and then times the two. Yeah. So this is, as I said, yeah, it's good practice of number, number stuff, which you guys need practice of um, for these steps. Okay, so that was cool because we just had to, um, we just had to throw it all in, work out that basically. That was fun, yeah. In a calculator, you would get that answer. If you just threw this in the calculator, you would get it. Uh, but this was a non-calc. So now... Um, we were just asked to evaluate the integral. So we, in, when you did that, notice that it said that the green one, see the green one came out as the, oh no, hang on, wait. Look how much space I use and how much I don't know what happened anyway. So, oh yeah, no, it's because, so, but notice when, if we're asked to calculate the area, what it did was it calculated this area and it put it in as a negative and then added it to this area as a positive. But now we're asked to calculate the area we're going to have to work out this area is a positive, which is fine, and then work out that one, which will be spat out as a negative, but we'll turn it into a positive and then add them. More messing around. So we have to do two separate integrals. We've got to do one with the lower limit, limit from, what is it, minus 2 to 0. Then we've got to do another integral. Why, the limit oh, from, can you use Oh, yeah, can you use calculus? Yeah, because it's getting messy now. So it ends up just taking forever. So I'll show you the way we split it up. We're going to split it up into two separate integrals. So we'll do the green area. So in a way, yeah, tell the animated point, on my question I probably should have just said find the shaded area. So it would have made more sense. So it's going to be the green area plus the red area. And the green area is going to get set out as a negative. But when we add them together, oh, we put the green area in as a positive. Um, so the red area. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Um, so notice you get a different answer if they ask for the integral. 
we got 16 thirds. Um, and if we ask for just the shaded area, we got 16. And that's because um, to get 16 thirds, they did negative 5 and a third plus 10, 10 and 2 thirds. They added it together that way. And negative 5 and a third plus 2 thirds is 5 and 1 third. 10 and 2 thirds is 5 and a third. So to get this answer, they added that and that. The calculator adds that and that. But if they with the area, we've got to make the area positive. I think the next page is just um, another, some more examples. The next page is just another example, just like it, to be honest. There's nothing, no real new theory coming up. It's just another practice in case we didn't get it. Um, so from this, we can sedu deduce that. If there's an example like this, the integral, the area, or the integral from this to this is the same as a to c, f of x plus b. So c meaning like the purpley bit. So the purpley bit, see the purpley bit I mean is this bit here. And the orangey bit, I mean, is this bit here. And what do you think they mean the C is? Normally it's A to B. What do you think? Yeah, in this case it's zero. Yeah, because it's this little point here where it crosses over. No worries. No worries. Sorry you didn't get time. Hey, Lee, mommy, if you have questions about the TA. Yeah, I'll have a little look on my, what's it, what's it called? I'll be around tomorrow too. What's that? Yeah, yeah, do as much as you can and then you might just have a few little questions. One thing is, um, remember that if, hang on, if, um, if it gives you f dash x and it asks for f of x, you've got to integrate. So it's going from the derivative to the function, you've got to integrate it. Yeah, so why don't you do that? And I haven't tried to give you any questions in that style. Why cause we love it? Yes, I'm learning acting. Yeah. I tell my first integration joke. <laughs> and I was laughing and he called me a nerd. <laughs>